Hello. In this lecture, we will prove that a hyperbolic group, it contains only finitely many conjugacy classes of finite subgroups. And then we will introduce the concept of quasi-convex subgroups in a hyperbolic group. Okay, so let us first begin with this theorem. So let G be a hyperbolic group. So by the definition of hyperbolic group, the G has to be finitely generative and the uh, triangles in the Kelly graph are slim. So if I take a finitely generated group, so then that group G, it contains only finitely many conjugacy classes of finite subgroups. First of all, what is the meaning of uh, conjugacy class of a subgroup? So conjugacy uh, class of a subgroup H is nothing but this set of all conjugates of the subgroup H. So to prove this theorem, so we need the, this following lemma. So let X be a geodesic metric space, which is delta hyperbolic. And let us take Y to be a non-empty bounded closed set in X. So we'll find a point which we'll, we'll call to be the quasi-center of this uh, bounded set Y. So how do I do that thing? So let us take this Ry to be the infimum of all positive number rho such that Y is contained in some ball around X of radius rho, where this X, it belongs to the this hyperbolic metric space X. And now let us take C epsilon Y. So where this epsilon, it is a positive number. So the C epsilon Y, it is this set, set up all elements, X belongs to this capital X, such that this Y is contained in the ball around X of radius Ry plus epsilon. So what we are going to prove that, so this set C epsilon one, so this has diameter less than four delta plus two epsilon. So this we are going to show and uh, this collection of this point, so this C epsilon one, it is a bounded set. So any point of the set will be called to be the quasi, quasi center. So C epsilon Y is called the quasi center set of Y. Okay, so let us go to the proof of this lemma. So let us take two points, X and X prime in this C epsilon Y. So then, so this Y, it will be contained in the ball of radius Ry plus epsilon around X and Y will also be contained in the ball of radius Ry plus epsilon around x prime. So this is by the definition. And now let us take m to be the midpoint of the geodesic joining x and x prime. So this is my picture. So we have taken this x and x prime in the c epsilon y and this m is the midpoint of the geodesic joining this x and x prime. So now if a uh, distance between this midpoint to every point of Y, if it is strictly less than Ry, so then as this Y is closed and bounded, so there will exist some positive number rho, such that this rho, again, it is strictly less than Ry, and Y is contained in the ball of radius rho around M. So this contradicts that, 
So this Ry is the infimum. So therefore, so this assumption is wrong. So therefore, there exists some element y in this bounded set capital Y such that distance between m and y is greater than or equal to Ry. So we have this picture here. So distance between this midpoint m and y, so this is greater than equals to Ry. Now let us look into this triangle yx x prime. So this triangle is delta slim because uh, x is a hyperbolic vertex space. Now for this point m, so there will exist a point p either in ge this geodesic joining x y or in this geodesic joining x prime y such that distance between m and p is less than equals to delta. So let us first take, so this p belongs to the geodesic joining x and y. And now observe that distance between y and m, so this is less than equals to distance between uh, yp and distance between mp. So, so this r y, so this uh, this is less than equals to distance between y and m, and this is distance uh, this is less than equals to distance between y p plus distance between uh, p and m, which is again less than equals to delta. So therefore, we have this thing, we have this inequality, and now distance between y and p. So this will be equal to the distance between x y minus distance between x p. So that is clear from this picture. So p is on this geodesic. So therefore, uh, we have this thing. So di uh, distance between y and p is equal to distance x y minus distance x p. And now again, so distance between uh, x and y so this is strictly less than r y plus epsilon. So this follows from this, this fact. So y belongs to this capital Y. So therefore distance between x and y, it will be strictly less than r y plus epsilon. So we have this inequality here and uh, again, if I apply triangle in inequality, so minus distance xp will be less than equals to minus distance xm plus delta. So this will be equal to your ry minus half of the distance between x and x prime because distance between x and m is equal to half of the distance between x and x prime. m is the midpoint of the geodesic joining x and x prime. So what we got here, so this ry is strictly less than ry minus half of this distance between x and x prime plus 2 delta plus epsilon. So from here, so distance between x and x prime so that will be less than equals to 4 delta plus 2 epsilon. So therefore, what we have proved, diameter of the set C epsilon Y, so this is less than equals to 4 delta plus 2 epsilon. Okay. So now let us go back to the proof of the theorems. So let us take a finite subgroup, H to be a finite subgroup of the uh, hyperbolic group G. So the hyperbolic constant of this uh, hyperbolic group that I have taken to be delta. And now what we want to prove that uh, it has uh, uh, finitely many uh, conjugacy classes. So now consider the quasi center set C1H. So here this epsilon is equal to one here. So consider the quasi center set C1H of the subgroup H. So by the previous lemma, 
So diameter of the C1H is less than equals to 4 delta plus 2. Okay. And uh, recall the definition of the C1H. So it is the set of all elements. Here it will be group elements, all group elements such that this H is contained in the ball of radius Rh plus 1 around G. Okay. So now let us take some element G in C1H. So that implies that this H is subset of this ball. And now if I take any element small h from the subgroup capital H and note that so this left coset H H which is nothing but equal to again H is uh, contained in again the ball around H G so translate uh, this element G by H left translate this element G by H so this yeah, so if I apply a left translation here by an element H, so we'll get this uh, thing. So HH is contained in the ball of radius RH plus one around the point HG. Okay, so this is true because uh, this element H acts as left translation, which is an isometric. So what we have proved here, so this, uh, subgroup again it is contained in this uh, in this ball of radius rh plus 1 around hg so this implies that so this hg so this again belongs to your c1h so therefore what we have proved that so we have started with an element g and again we have proved that Hg is contained in C1H for all element H in the subgroup G, H, sorry. So therefore, so this H lives C1H in varying that we have shown. Now let us take X to be a vertex of this C1H. So they, again, so one can check that if I take this conjugate X inverse HX, so this lives x inverse c1h invariant. So please check this thing. So now uh, observe that. So this one, it belongs to your x inverse c1h. So because we have taken x to be in c1h, so one will belongs to uh, this x inverse c1h. And diameter of this x inverse c1h so this will be less than equals to 4 delta plus 2. So this is true because this x inverse is acting by left trans translation which is an isometric. And now let us take an element h in the subgroup capital H. And now observe that so this conjugate so this x inverse h x, so this belongs to the subgroup x inverse capital H x dot one, which belongs to this x inverse C one h. So this again, it belongs to your x inverse C one h. So, so uh, this x in, so this is true because this x in inverse hx, so this lives x inverse c1h invariant. Okay. So therefore, this x inverse hx, it belongs to your x inverse c1h for all h belongs to this uh, subgroup. And so this x inverse hx, so this is a subset of x inverse c1h. So therefore, uh, so what we have shown that, so this x inverse C1H is contained in this ball of radius 4 delta plus 2 around 1.
so therefore so this conjugate of a finite set group lie in a bounded set of diameter 4 delta plus 2 so this conjugate x inverse hx so what we have shown that this is contained in x inverse uh, c1h and this x inverse this set is again contained in this ball of radius 4 delta plus 2 around 1. So this uh, conjugate it lies in this ball. So therefore we have this thing here. So conjugate of a finite subgroup lie in a bounded set of diameter 4 delta plus 2. So by Friesian whole principle, so what we have, so we have the required result. So what is the result? So so if I take a finite subgroup H, so it contains only finitely many conjugacy classes of that finite subgroup. So that thing we have proved. So because this is a uh, finite set, so we are dealing with finitely generated group. So any ball will be, uh, finite ball will be a finite set. So therefore, by pigeon whole principle, so we cannot have infinitely many conjugacy classes. Okay. So now let us give the definition of this quasi-convex set. What do you mean by quasi-convex set? So let X be a geodesic matrix space. A subset Y of X is said to be K quasi-convex for some non-negative number K. If for all elements X and Y in the subset capital Y, the geodesic joining XY lie in the closed K neighborhood of this Y. So that is, so if this is my space, uh, subspace Y, so Y is in uh, the metric space, geodesic metric space X, and we take to any two points x and y in this capital Y and join this xy by a geodesic, this geodesic. So this geodesic will lie in a k neighborhood of this y. So what does it mean? So if I take any point here on this geodesic, so we'll get a point on y such that the distance between those two points are less than equal to k. So if I take any point on this geodesic xy, so there will exist a point in, in y such that the distance between those two points is less than equals to k. Okay. So we uh, had the definition of this quasi-geodesic. So one can prove that any quasi-geodesic in a hyperbolic metric space is a quasi-convex set. So this is true because of the stability of quasi geodesics. Now let me give the definition of quasi-convex subgroup. A subgroup H of a hyperbolic group is said to be quasi-convex if H is quasi-convex set in the uh, Cayley graph of this G. So if I take the Cayley graph and if I take the subgroup, so that will be a subspace of that Cayley graph. With that subspace, it is a quasi-convex set in the Cayley graph. We'll call that subgroup to be quasi-convex subgroup. Okay. So now let us uh, do this proposition. So let G be a hyperbolic group and let S be a finite generating set of G. So 
because here it is a hyperbolic group, it will be finitely generated and you will get a finite generating set of this group G, which we have which uh, we have called it to be S. And let us take H to be a quasi-convex subgroup of G. So then the claim is H is finitely generated and the embedding of this H into G is a quasi-isometric embedding. And this will show that this H, in fact, it is a hyperbolic group. So if I take any quasi-convex subgroup of a hyperbolic group, so it will be also a hyperbolic group. Okay. So what do you want to show? So there exists uh, some non-negative number. No, sorry. Uh, so we already assumed that this H to be quasi-convex subgroup. So there will exist some non-negative number K such that H is K quasi-convex in G. So we want to show that this H is finitely generated. So let us take any element H in this subgroup capital H and join this uh, identity element uh, one and H by a geodesic of G. So this one, it belongs to the subgroup H and H uh, again, it belongs to the subgroup H. So this geodesic as per the definition of this quasi-convex subgroup. So this geodesic, so this will lie in the closed K neighborhood of this uh, H. So this is my H. So this geodesic will lie in the closed K neighborhood of H. So if I take any point on this geodesic, so I'll get a point, uh, point in the uh, subgroup H such that the distance between those two points are less than equals to k. Okay. So here what I have done. So let us uh, let us level this geodesic 1h by a1, a2, a n, where this ai, either it belongs to the generator, uh, either it is a generator or, or it is an inverse of this generator. So AI is, it belongs to S union, S inverse. So then this H, so this will be equal to A1, A2, AN. And let us write BI equal to A1, A2, AI. So we have this picture here. This is exactly the picture. So uh, this H is equal to A1, A2, AN. The first edge it will be leveled by A1. The second edge it will be leveled by A2. This vertex B1 is just uh, A1. Vertex B2 is just uh, A1, A2. And vertex BI is A1, A2, AI. So corresponding to each BI, so this vertex lie in this geodesic uh, one edge. Corresponding to this vertex BI, so there will exist a point HI such that the distance between bi and hi is less than equals to k. Yeah, so as h is quasi-convex, there exists uh, hi belongs to this subgroup capital A, such that distance between bi and hi is less than equals to k. Now, if I take this word hi inverse hi minus 1, so this is nothing but equal to this word, so hi inverse bi, bi inverse bi minus 1, uh, then bi minus 1 inverse hi minus 1. So this is equal to this thing. So let me go back to this picture. So if I take this hi and hi minus 1, this one, so we are taking, so we are taking this path. So this path will correspond to this word. Okay. So now let us let us take xi to be a reduced word which represents this hi inverse hi minus 1. And because this xi is equal to this thing and hi and hi minus 1 it belongs to h. So xi it belongs to h. 
And what is the length of this Xi? So it is the distance because it is reduced, it is equal to the distance between Hi and Hi minus one. And now you uh, apply this triangle inequality. So that will be less than equals to distance between Hi Vi plus distance between Vi Vi minus one plus the distance between Vi minus one Hi minus one. Distance between Hi and Vi is less than equals to K. Distance between Vi and Vi minus one is exactly equal to one. And again, distance between Vi minus one and Hi minus one, it is less than equals to K. So therefore, uh, this length of this Xi, it is less than equals to two K plus one. And also, so the distance between one and H one, it is less than equals to one plus K. And at the at the other end, distance between H and H n minus one, that is less than equals to one plus K. And also observe that this H is product of this elements. So H is equal to H1 multiplied by H1 inverse H2 multiplied by H2 inverse H3. And you continue in this way. And at the end, you will get Hn minus one inverse H. And now note that, so length of this H1, length of this H1 inverse H2, length of this Hi, minus one inverse hi. So all is less than equals to two k plus one. So now consider this set A to be the all elements x in this subgroup H such that x is contained in this ball uh, of radius two k plus one around one. So this set, it is a finite set. So uh, all this uh, H1, uh, Hi minus one inverse Hi, it belongs to A. And at the end, Hn minus one inverse H, it belongs to this set A. So therefore, so this H is generated by a subset of A. And because A is a finite set, so H is a, uh, so therefore H is a finite degenerated group. And now suppose, so this distance between uh, so distance uh, dh, so this represents the Watt metric of h. So now we have a generating set of this h. So with respect to that generating set, so we'll have a separate Watt metric of that subgroup. So first of all, note that, so dh, which represents the distance uh, in the group h or also, it represents the what metric. So, distance in H between x and y it is less than equals to distance between x y for all x y belongs to H. So, check this thing. So, this distance it is for the group G, and H is a subgroup of G. H is finitely generated group. So corresponding to that finite degenerated subgroup H, we'll have another what matrix, which I have called it to be DH. So DH XY is less than equals to the distance between X and uh, Y. So this distance in the what matrix of G. So please check this thing. Okay. So now let us take H to be equals to X inverse Y. And uh, let us write H equals to H1, H2, Hn. Hi is, belongs to A. And let us take N to be equal to the distance between one and H. So this distance is measured in uh, the subgroup H. So because I have taken N to be the distance, so this word will be reduced word. Okay. And distance between one and H, it will be same as the distance between X and Y because X inverse Y is equal to H. And the left, uh, left ac action is an isometric. Okay. So now take, let us take the distance between X and Y in the group G. So this will be again equal to the distance between one H in the group G. 
Now you apply this triangle inequality. This is less than equals to distance between one H1, the distance between H1 and H1, H2. And at last distance between H1, Hn minus one and uh, H, which is equal to H1, H2, Hn. So now note that again, the left uh, translation is an isometry. So therefore distance between H1 and H1, H2, it is same as the distance between one H2. So distance between H1, Hn minus one and H, H is equal to H1, H2, Hn. So this will be equal to distance between one and Hn. And each Hi, it belongs to A, so therefore, Distance between one and H A it is less than uh, less than two k plus one. So therefore, what we have so this thing is equal uh, less than equals to n times two k plus one. And what is n? So n is the uh, h distance between x and y. So g distance between x and y is less than equals to two k plus one times h distance between x and y. So therefore, what we have proved that, so this H is quasi isometrically embedded in G. And in the second part, uh, we want to prove that this H is a hyperbolic group. So that will follow from the stability of quasi geodesic. So as H is quasi isometrically embedded in G, so geodesics in H, so will be quasi geodesics in G. And by stability of quasi geodesics, is you can easily prove that the triangles in H are slim. So that I leave as an exercise. And there is another exercise which says the following. So if I take two geodesics, x y and x prime y prime, such that distance between x and x prime is less than equals to one, and distance between y and y prime is less than equals to one. Now, if I take any point ZT, the geodesic XY and ZT prime in the geodesic joining XY, Y prime, such that distance from X to ZT is same as the distance between X prime to ZT prime, then one can prove that distance between ZT and ZT prime is less than equals to 4 delta plus 3. Okay, so this I leave as an exercise. Okay, so I'll stop here.